Chapter 4, huh? The Museum Thieves. I'm reading a story. He's making dinner in the other room. Hmm. Elevator. Mr. and Mrs. O.J. Dart lived in the apartment above the lamb chops. Mr. Dart was an important man, the director of the famous Museum of Art downtown in the city. Stanley Lambchop had noticed in the elevator that Mr. Dart, who is ordinarily a cheerful man, had become quite gloomy, but he had no idea what the reason was. And then at breakfast one morning, he heard Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop talking about Mr. Dart. I see, said Mr. Lambchop, reading the paper of his coffee cup, that still another painting has been stolen from the famous museum. It says here that Mr. O.J. Dart, the director, is at his wit's end. Hmm, I guess that means he doesn't know what to do. Oh dear, are the police no help? Mrs. Lambchop asked. It seems not, said Mr. Lambchop. Listen to what the chief of police told the newspaper. We suspect a gang of sneak thieves. These are the worst kind. They work by sneakery, which makes them very difficult to catch. However, my men and I will keep trying. Meanwhile, I hope people will buy tickets for the policeman's ball and not park their cars where the signs say don't. The next morning, Stanley Lambchop heard Mr. Dart talking to his wife in the elevator. These sneak thieves work at night, Mr. Dark said. It's very hard for our guards to stay awake when they have been on duty all day. And the famous museum is so big, we cannot guard every picture at the same time. I fear it's hopeless. Hopeless! Suddenly, as if an electric light bulb had lit up in the air above his head, giving out little shooting lines of excitement, Stanley Lambchop had an idea. He told it to Mr. Dart. Stanley, Mr. Dart said, if your mother will give her permission, I will put you and your plan to work this very night. Mrs. Lambchop gave her permission. But you'll have to take a long nap this afternoon, she said. I won't have you up till all hours unless you do. That evening, after a long nap, Stanley went with Mr. Dart to the famous museum. Mr. Dart took him into the main hall, where the biggest and most expensive paintings, oh, most important paintings, were hung. He pointed to a huge painting that showed a bearded man, wearing a floppy hat, floppy velvet hat, playing a violin for a lady who lay on a couch. There was a half man, half horse person standing behind them, and three children with wings were flying around above. That, Mr. Dart explained, was the most expensive painting in the world. There was an empty picture frame on the opposite wall. We shall hear more about that later on. Mr. Dart took Stanley into his office and said, it's time for you to put on a disguise. I already thought of that, Stanley Lambchop said, and I brought one. My cowboy suit, it has a red bandana that I can tie over my face. Nobody will recognize me in a million years. No, Mr. Dart said, you will have to wear the disguise I have chosen. From a closet, he took a white dress with a blue sash, a pair of shiny pointed shoes, a wide straw hat with a blue band that matched the sash, and a wig and a stick. The wig was made of blonde hair, long, and done in ringlets. The stick was curved at the top, and it, too, had a blue ribbon on it. In this shepherdess disguise, Mr. Dart said, you will look like a painting that belongs in the main hall. We do not have cowboy pictures in the main hall. Stanley was so disgusted, he could hardly speak. I will look like a girl. That's what I will look like. He said, I wish I never had that idea. But he was a good sport, so he put on this disguise. Back in the main hall, Mr. Dart helped Stanley climb up onto the empty picture frame. Stanley was able to, play, to stay in place because Mr. Dart had cleverly put small, four small spikes in the wall, one for each hand and foot. The frame was a perfect fit. Against the wall, Stanley looked just like a picture. Except for one thing, Mr. Dart said. Shepherdesses are supposed to look happy. They smile at their sheep and at the sky. You look fierce, not happy, Stanley. Stanley tried to get a faraway look in his eyes and even smile a bit. 
Mr. Dart stood back a few feet and stared at him for a moment. Well, he said, it may not be art, but I know what I like. He went off to make sure that certain other parts of Stanley's plan were taken care of, and Stanley was left alone. It was very dark in the main hall. A little bit of moonlight came through the windows, and Stanley could just make out the world's most expensive painting on the opposite wall. He felt as though the bearded man with the violin and the lady on the couch and the half-horse person and the winged children were all waiting as he was for something to happen. Time passed and he got tireder and tireder. Anyone would be tired this late at night, especially if he had to stand in a picture frame balancing on little spikes. Maybe they won't come, Stanley thought. Maybe the sneak thieves won't come at all. The moon went behind a cloud, and then the main hall was pitch dark. It seemed to get quieter, too, with the darkness. There was absolutely no sound at all. Stanley felt the hair on the back of his neck prickle beneath the golden curls of the wig. Creak! The creaking sound came from right out in the middle of the main hall, and even as he heard it, Stanley saw in the same place a tiny yellow glow of light. The creaking came again, and the glow got bigger. A trap door had opened in the floor, and two men came up through it into the hall. Stanley understood everything all at once. These must be the sneak thieves. They had a secret trap door entrance into the museum from outside. That was why they had never been caught. And now, tonight, they were back to steal the most expensive painting in the world. He held very still in his picture frame and listened to the sneak thieves. This is it, Max, said the first one. This is where we art robbers pull a sensational job whilst the civilized community sleeps. Right, Luther, said the other man. In all this great city, there's no one to suspect us. Ha ha, thought Stanley Lambchop. That's what you think. The sneak thieves put down their lantern and took the world's most expensive painting off the wall. Huh. What would we do to anyone who tried to capture us? Max, the first one man asked. We would kill him. What else? His friend replied. That was enough to frighten Stanley, and he was even more frightened when Luther came over and stared at him. This sheep girl, Luther said. I thought sheep girls were supposed to smile, Max. This one looks scared. Just in time, Stanley managed to get a faraway look in his eyes again to smile, sort of. You're crazy, Luther, Max said. She's smiling, and what a pretty thing she is, too. That made Stanley furious. He waited until the sneak thieves had turned the world's most expensive had turned to back to the world's most expensive painting, and he shouted in his loudest, most terrifying voice, Police! Police! Mr. Dart! The sneak thieves are here! The sneak thieves looked at each other. Max, said the first one very quietly, I think I heard the sheep girl yell. I think I did too, said Max in a quivery voice. Oh boy, yelling pictures, we both need a rest. You'll get a rest, all right, shouted Mr. Dart, running in with the chief of police and lots of guards and policemen behind him. You'll get arrested, that's what. Ha, ha, ha. The sneak thieves were too mixed up by Mr. Dart's joke and too frightened by the policemen to put up a fight. Before they knew it, they had been handcuffed and led away to jail. The next morning in the office of the chief of police, Stanley Lambchop got a medal. The day after that, his picture was in all the newspapers. The next chapter is going to be Arthur's Good Idea.